someone who's been in the system for now 23 years uh, as a judge, I have a different take. In a sense, I think it's important that judges must retire. Please be seated. Books of a particular genre. I mean, it could be a book on history. It could be a book on. The idea is that courts must reach out to people. And in that sense, we must open up our processes so people understand what goes on in our courts. COVID was a game changer for us because most of our work had to be done on a video conferencing platform. Well, that was a necessity during COVID times, but there have been huge positives from our learning curve in COVID. One of the things which we learned in COVID times when we were on the video conferencing platform was that more women are arguing cases in court just because they don't have to waste the whole day in court waiting for their cases to reach. Women, as I said, perform multifold responsibilities. So it's far more efficient for a woman to be on a video conferencing platform than physically present in the court. Uh, we have begun live streaming our court proceedings. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you, uh, a good friend told me recently when we were doing the hearings in the, uh, the same-sex marriage equality case, he says, you know, watching your proceedings was better than watching a Netflix movie at the end of the day. But the idea of, the idea of live streaming court proceedings really is to allow for people to understand what goes on in court. And I do believe that this is part of the process of confidence building, of ensuring that people for whom we really are intended to serve have an element of trust in the work which we do. Uh, sometimes the work is very boring in the court, but they must know that, you know, citizens' small grievances, whether it's about pension, whether it's about, you know, uh, the termination of a job, whether it's the implementation of industrial settlement or a tax reassessment order, occupies the same serious time of the court as any other big ticket case which you read about in the newspapers. So live streaming is one of the uh, measures which we have taken. As I said, translation of our judgments which we have done. We are now also providing for transcription of court proceedings using again AI assisted tools. So for instance, in the more important cases before the constitution bench, we've just concluded judgment, we have just concluded the arguments in say the article 370 case. The marriage equality case ended in a judgment. We've got so many different judgments which are now in the process of being considered. So we are allowing for transcription. The lawyer in the districts, the lawyer in the high courts is the first point of contact for a citizen who has a problem. When the case comes to the Supreme Court, they shouldn't feel disconnected from the process of dispensing justice. The elected arm of government is and is intended to be responsive to the people. Obviously, the judges go not by popular morality, as I call it, but by constitutional morality. So what is Justice Chandrachud's favorite leisure activities? I know for, it's for a fact that you read books, but what kind of books do you like? You like fiction, non-fiction, you read more of law? Well, actually, you know, I, I have one regret, Utkarsh, which is that I have this pile of unread books. Kalpana always tells me, who's a, my best friend and, and, and guide and, and, and true, uh, true partner in every way, she always tells me that this pile of books now at your bedside is going to topple over your head if you move your arm too violently in the night to drink a glass of water or something. But I try and, I try and read very diversely. I try and create a space for about 45 minutes to an hour every night to read. And I, li I like to read uh, extensively. Um, I, and I don't read books of a particular genre. I mean, it could be a book on history. It could be a book on economics. I love to read on contemporary politics as well. As I told you, I've been reading The Tyranny of Merit. I just bought a copy of uh, a book called uh, The Democracy and Its Discontents, against by, again by uh, uh, Sandelman. Uh, so my mantra, actually, in the leisure time is to read. Uh, I used to travel a lot. Unfortunately, I travel only for work now, not so much for leisure, but there's scarcely a place where Kalpana and I haven't trekked in India. We've seen rural parts of India. We've traveled across India, whether it's Ladakh, whether it's uh, Sikkim, whether it's the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, whether it's Lakshadweep, uh, the heartland of uh, India in, in, in Uttar Pradesh itself. I love music as well. Music is a great balm for the soul. Someone who's been in the system for now 23 years uh, as a judge, I have a different take. In a sense, I think it's important that judges must retire. And why do I say that? Because I think it's too much of a responsibility to cast on human beings in terms of their own infallibility 
by postulating that they shouldn't retire from office. Uh, judges are human beings. You are prone to error. Society has evolved. What was par for the course in the 1980s was no longer par for the course in 2023. And it's not going to be there in, 2020, in 2035. So it's important that you know you must pass on the mantle to succeeding generations who would be able to point out to the errors of the past and rejig or to reset legal principles, the legal framework for society to evolve. Because giving that sort of a power to unelected judges to continue for life, I feel in the Indian context, was wisely not adopted by the Indian constitution. So as to allow for a source of change, of transformation of, of legal principles as new and succeeding generations take and hold judicial office.